Welcome to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. And now your host, Tim Johnson. Earl Hurd and Bic Media are recognizable names in Louisiana industry. Recently, Bic Media Solutions has gotten into movies, television programs, and books. Their latest book project, To Rock Bottom and Back, is a very interesting story. Earl Hurd of Bic Alliance and New York Times bestselling author Susan Mustafa join us when we return on the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Since 1919, we've designed and constructed hundreds of industrial plants, roads, ships, dams, and executed some of the most complex jobs in the world. In fact, our quality and dependability are legendary. Today, the legend continues as Brown & Root delivers engineering, construction, maintenance, and industrial specialty services throughout the U.S. and the world from our headquarters here in Louisiana. We are Brown & Root. In Baton Rouge, see your good neighbor State Farm agent Brady Flavin for your insurance and financial needs. For over a quarter century, Kelly's has operated with honesty, integrity, and above all, safety. Kelly's features a fleet of quality equipment operated by dedicated, safety-minded employees skilled in land clearing, above-ground right-of-way maintenance, vegetation control, station yard and man facility maintenance, above-ground pipeline support, and more. Kelly's Industrial Services, where pipeline right-of-way maintenance gets done right. Consumers and property owners with construction projects can have a successful result or regretful experiences that could have been avoided. Before any construction project, verify licensure of the contractor and check references. Scammers will claim to be insured or bonded, so always check first. Download our app, LA Contractor, from the Android or Apple Store. Visit our website, lacontractor.org, or contact the Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors. We're here to help before things go wrong. Hire a licensed contractor. It's the law. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Very pleased to be joined by BIC Alliance Chairman Earl Hurd. Later in the show, we're going to be joined by Susan Mustafa, who is a New York Times bestselling author, to discuss the book project that BIC Media Solutions is working on, Rock Bottom and Back. But as we start, Earl, we're going to spend this first segment talking about the BIC Alliance. Welcome back, buddy. How are you? Good seeing you, Tim. Always appreciate the invite. Glad you're here. Uh, give us a big picture overview of the BIC Alliance. I mentioned in the open of the show that Earl Hurd and BIC Alliance are well-known names in industry along the Gulf Coast. Give us an overview of where BIC Alliance is today. Well, BIC Alliance started back in 1983 and our main product is we publish BIC Magazine, which is a multi-industry energy magazine that we've been doing since 84. And when I say multi-industry, multi-job title, it reaches upstream, midstream, and downstream. Most magazines are vertical, ours are horizontal. So we reach multiple industries and about 15 job titles. It really has become uh, probably the most well-read, largest, largest distri distribution uh, periodical uh, around the oil and gas industry and petrochemical in, in North America. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive. Now, BIC Magazine is only one part of the BIC Alliance. You've also got uh, BIC Recruiting, BIC Media Solutions, IVS Investment Banking. Right. Tell us briefly about some of these well, other elements. Uh, BIC Magazine is about 50% of our business. But about 16 years ago, uh, actually a guy called me and, and uh, wanted to, me to help him find somebody to hire. I thought he wanted to run a classified ad, but come to find out he wanted uh, me to do some recruiting. So that put us in the recruiting business. So we own an executive recruiting firm, and then we own a, a private equity firm uh, that does mostly energy-related investments where we help link service companies. We've done about $280 million in that business since 2008. And I've got two partners that run that. Thomas Brinsko and John Zappler. And two, two great guys doing business for you. Now, BIC Alliance is over 
30 years old, right? I think you've mentioned right. before, you talked on the radio that it's a 30-year-old overnight success, yeah, right? That so, took about years, <laughs> how about that? Tell us, tell us a little bit about the history of how you got started. Well, I was a training manager in the, in the Ethel Corporation, and I left uh, Ethel and I, I got interested in movies. And I, uh, uh, so I started producing video training movies. And I got out into the marketplace and started trying to advertise my video company. And uh, the only people that ever called me is people won't sell me another ad because I, I needed to reach multiple industries. Well, there wasn't a publication to do that. And not only that, the publication wouldn't let us do editorial or cherry picked a database. So I said, to heck with it, I started a newsletter. End up the newsletter became tra uh, Training Coordinator Magazine, which came big. The video company went busted. Now, 30 years later, I'm back in the film business. I've asked you this question on the radio, <laughs> and I think your, your, uh, your answer is always interesting. As an entrepreneur, as a guy who's hustled, as a guy who's networked, you've learned a lot about those things. What's the most significant thing you've learned about yourself? Well, I found that when I have, my faith is strong, which it wasn't always that way. When I have my when I make my uh, make faith, my God, family, and others first, then I'm a lot more successful than when I focus on myself. And that's really and, that and networking. And 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 that networking piece has been critically important to your success. And you even do seminars now, right? Teaching people well, how to I've, network. I've done, to talk, yeah. talk about that aspect. Talk about networking and and what you think the real key to that is. Well. Networking, and we're thinking about doing another a movie about it, actually. Um, but networking is defined as getting together to get ahead. Most people think of it as going somewhere and passing out a business card, but it really has to become a way of life. Uh, me personally, I try to always try to say at least one nice thing to three people every day that they're not expecting it, but give three referrals a day. And it really, when you get that mindset of trying to help others be successful then uh, it's kind of called the law of reciprocity, really. Uh, Whatever you give is going to come back right. to you somehow, and right? That's, that's been my secret to success, is trying to help make others successful. I think if you look up the <laughs> word networking in the dictionary, Earl Hurd's picture is probably next to it, right? <laughs> well, um, uh, Mark Herzog said that I invented networking before there was a computer. So he works for us <laughs> that, in Philadelphia. <laughs> that's, that's the way it works. Now, you're heavily involved in oil and gas, right? You, you talk about upstream, midstream, downstream. You've, you run the gamut. Uh, the, the, the folks in exploration and, and production have been struggling in this state. What's your overall perspective on the condition of the oil and gas industry in Louisiana and along the Gulf Coast? Well, it seems to be now that $50 a barrel is a magic number, Tim. And, uh, but what a lot of people don't realize, most of the layoffs have been on the upstream. Midstream and downstream, especially downstream, when, you, when the prices on crude are low, uh, the feedstock for the refiners and petrochemicals is low. So it, it, there's still some expansion going on. Uh, and the companies that are multi-industry are going to survive better than those that are one-dimensional. And that's why there's a lot of ac acquisitions going on where maybe an upstream company may be diversifying and moving downstream. Um, we're optimistic, you know. Uh, there's other things globally going on, but we, as long as we got fracking, that's going to help us. Have you seen it have any impact on your business, Earl? I mean, you're not directly in, the, you know, the industry, so to speak, but you're you're affiliated with it. How how's it uh, uh, our impacted you? Our business is off about ten percent, uh, but in the big scheme of things, uh, uh, we always ran our business. Uh, well, we ran it so so many years when we had to watch everything that we still do that now. So we, we're conservative, but we're not afraid to take chances. And that's what I think you've got to be you know, in our business. We're going to get into a pretty good discussion about this book and, uh, and television project that you've been working on with Susan Mustafa, who is a New York Times bestselling author, uh, Rock Bottom and Back. 30 seconds or so, give us a setup on what that is. What's the project about? Well, the main thing about Rock Bottom and Back is that uh, every one of us knows somebody or in our family, a friend, that's lost everything. I did that in the early 1980s, so I've always had empathy for people that were, and it's always been interesting to me how some people 
uh, were able to come back from rock bottom and others weren't. So I decided to make a movie and a book about it. And we're going to talk in more detail about that when we come back from the break because it is a fascinating story. It's a fascinating project. You're working with a wonderful writer to pull all of this sort of thing together and she'll join us when we return. We're visiting with Earl Hurd. We'll be joined by Susan Mustafa and you're watching the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. It might be one of the most efficient, most effective methods of communication we've ever used. What if I said that the American dream is alive and well, and that it exists for anyone willing to build it? That the power of a nation does not reside in its monuments, but in the hearts and minds of those who built them, and that the country's greatest heroes also wear hard hats. In today's America, it's not enough to dream about the future. You have to build it. Build your future at BYF.org. For more than 25 years, the TJC Group has been helping industry communicate and build relationships with communities, elected officials, and governmental agencies. We are the leading firm in the U.S. for the development, management, and facilitation of industry-based community advisory panels. Whether you're building a new facility or you manage an existing business, let us put our community and governmental relations experience to work for you. The TJC Group, facilitating solutions for business and industry. Spadell's Florist was founded over 30 years ago. From my mom's kitchen, we have grown into one of the largest florists in this area. There's a sense in our community that you stick together. Good times are bad, and oil and gas is part of that family. They're my neighbors. They're my customers. They're the person I'm sitting next to at church. If oil and gas is doing well, all of our businesses are doing well. We are Louisiana Oil and Gas. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Uh, originally joined by Earl Hurd of the Bic Alliance and now very pleased to be joined by Susan Mustafa who is a New York Times best-selling author and the collaborator with Earl on their new book and television project, movie project, uh, Rock Bottom and Back. Susan, welcome. Thank you, thank you for having us. Um, let's go back before we get to Susan, let's talk Earl, this, this whole idea of this, this project from Rock Bottom and Back, or Rock Bottom and Back from Desperation to Inspiration. You mentioned it in the first segment, but let's get into it a little bit deeper. You said you were really the inspiration for this. It was your own uh, history. It was your, your own uh, return from rock bottom that sort of inspired you to start this project. Talk a little bit more about that. Um, when my first business failed in the early 1980s, I found that the people that helped me the most were those that had been to rock bottom themselves. Uh, Butch Baum, uh, he was an entrepreneur, he helped me a lot, and, and uh, Sonny Anderson, the industry guy, and every one of them, it was like, when I, when I went busted, it was like, uh, as a matter of fact, one of them told me that I had joined the fraternity of the fallen, and that those would be the people that would help me the most, and I never forgot that, and, and it became really interesting to me over the years because we've been writing stories about people starting over in Bic Magazine for over 30 years. So it's always interested me. And so I, when I decided to start publishing books in 2005, one of them that I always wanted to do was about people that were not only starting out, but starting over. And this book is a collection of um, stories, inspirational stories of, of people who've done just that. They've hit rock bottom and they've come back and they are now inspiring others. Susan, talk a little bit about your background and what uh, intrigued you so much about this project. Well, when I came to Baton Rouge in 2000, my first job was at the Big Alliance with Mr. Earl and we've worked on numerous projects together over the years. Um, I've been in magazines and I used to write about the fun, happy things in life. 
you know, beautiful homes, music, art, and um, then Derek Todd Lee started his killing spree, and Sue Israel, Tony Clayton, and I ended up writing the Derek Todd Lee book, which led to the Sean Gillis book, which led to um, the Zodiac book with Gary Stewart. And, um, but in between that, I always try to write something inspirational because that's such a dark world and you have to balance all that negativity with some positive um, thoughts. So writing inspirational books is the perfect antidote to writing about <laughs> serial killers, if that makes sense. One of the things you've mentioned to me as we were discussing, you guys were on the radio a month or so ago, and as, as we were discussing this project and, and your appearance on the television show, you, you talked about how writing this book has really changed you. Um, share that with our, with our viewers. Well, I think it gave me more of an awareness. Um, one of the people in the book, Billy Rivers, and um, a few others, help the homeless. And I used to drive through New Orleans and see the homeless people underneath the interstate. And like everybody else, you know, that's sad and drive on. And here we have people who look at that totally differently, like this is someone I need to help. And it made me more aware of seeing people, they're the reasons why they are where they are in life, and that it is our responsibility to help them come back up. So that's we're, one of the ways. We're gonna talk about some of the individuals in the book and some of their stories as we go along in this segment, but I'll ask you this, Earl. As you researched this and as you looked at all of the individuals that ended up being part of this project, what is it that they have in common that allowed them to overcome their circumstances? You know, hit rock bottom, a lot of people stay there. The stories in this book are about uh, desperation back to inspiration, rock bottom and back. What's the common trait that these individuals display that allowed them to pick themselves up and move on? I think, uh, and Susan and I have talked about that a lot, the things that, that jumped out with me is these people that came back, they had hope. They had hope. And then they had, in most cases, they had somebody that reached out and gave them a helping hand. Uh, a lot of them, many of them, it was when their faith, uh, uh, it's a funny thing about faith. You may know God, but you don't know him good till you get to rock bottom because right. you talk to him a lot right. more there. <laughs> and uh, so I think the, the common thread of how some were able to come back, and, some, and that's what I wanted the story to be about, not just how they went to rock bottom, but what turned the tide. In one case, it might have been uh, uh, a grandparent that didn't give up. Another case, it might have been in Billy Rivers' case, a, a guy on a Christian motorcycle uh, gang went to see him in prison and, and um, said, listen, you better listen to me. I, God sent me to talk to you. So it's just... Um, Faith and friends and family and, and driving that inspiration really, I, as I see it, is, is really what a lot of these folks have in common. And one other thing I found that uh, Susan used the word antidote, but it's almost like there's a power, a fuel that comes from helping others. Once you get into it, it just, it, it's inspiring, you know, it's, it gives people a greater feeling maybe than drugs or alcohol or sexual addiction. It just, the feeling of giving back is uh, very rewarding. And they end up helping themselves through helping others. Yeah. And, and that really is the beauty of this, right, and why it's so such an important book, because a lot of these folks have gone on to have some success. Many of them had great success before they hit rock bottom and came back. We've got about 30 seconds left in this segment. Tell us briefly about one of your favorite stories from the book. Who's, who's your favorite character? Oh, gosh. Um, I think one of the ones that touched me the most, given the climate we have with the police nowadays, is Bobby Smith, who was a state trooper who was shot while on duty, blinded, and he lost everything. And how he turned his life around to now help other officers who have suffered from trauma is just, it's incredible to me. One of the really great stories in the book as well. Let's take a break. We're gonna come back. We'll look at the trailer because you guys are, are working on a television and movie projects with this as well. And Danny Trejo, the, the famous actor, is part of your team here. So we'll take a break. We'll come back and take a look at that and have some more discussion about the release date on the book and the movie and the TV project and all of those things. You're watching the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Tim Johnson here for Gulf Coast Occupational Medicine. 
with some of the most knowledgeable and hardest working medical professionals in Louisiana and eight convenient locations in Greater Baton Rouge, Gulf Coast provides injury management, physical exams, medical surveillance, and substance abuse testing. Once you know the folks at Gulf Coast, you'll realize they are your best option to protect your safety record and your bottom line. Gulf Coast Occupational Medicine, ride the wave to safety. For more than 20 years, the TJC Group has been helping companies assess their training needs and to develop programs that improve the effectiveness and productivity of their teams. Training doesn't have to be expensive or complicated. Let us put our experience and expertise to work for you. The TJC Group, facilitating solutions for business and industry. What if I said that whatever good things you build, build you? And that in this economy, sweat never loses its value. What if I said that there isn't a challenge in the world too great for a craft professional with the right tools, and that the steps that lead from where you are to where you want to be can only be built by you? Build your future at byf.org. Keen Miller traces its roots to the dawn of the petrochemical industry in Louisiana. As the legal needs of the sector grew, our firm emerged as a leader in environmental law, economic development, real estate, employment, utilities regulations, and more. Today, these same clients and those new to our state continue to rely upon the firm and its attorneys for creative ideas, practical advice, and Louisiana know-how. Industrial strength law. Learn more at KeenMiller.com. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show, visiting with Earl Hurd of the Bic Alliance and Susan Mustafa, who is a New York Times bestselling author. They've combined on a wonderful new book called Rock Bottom and Back. They also have a companion DVD, and they're working on a pilot for a television program. Danny Trejo, the award-winning actor, has cut a wonderful trailer uh, for, for the DVD and for the, potentially for the television program. Let's take a look at that. I'm Danny Trejo. Rock Bottom and Back shares stories of people from all walks of life who have gone from desperation to inspiration and who are now giving back in amazing ways. It really isn't worth living this long, slow death that alcoholism really takes you down. You know, really, I had just lost all hope at that point. And I thought, well, you know, it's be much better just to jump off of this bridge and just end it all right now. I looked at myself that next day, and I was like, you are disgusting. Who are you? Who have you become? I had no, I was so lost. I didn't realize how lost I was before that moment. There were so many dark moments in my life growing up. Uh, the first one being molested, and uh, I've been raped before. Um, I've had guns put to my head. I went so deep until I lost everything. I was sleeping on my fiance's couch, no job. I uh, had been convicted of a drug offense, was on probation, was in and out of jail. I just had to wake up one day and and at 15 years old, I became a full-fledged, needle-freak, heroin and cocaine junkie. My life went into a total tailspin. After a life of drugs, alcohol, and crime, I hit rock bottom in Soledad State Prison, a place I thought I'd never leave. Instead, it was where I began to rebuild and come back. I was a lucky one and learned from my mistakes, but I truly believe that we can learn and be inspired by others so we don't make the same mistakes. I'm going to share some stories with you. Stories of people from all walks of life who have gone from desperation to inspiration, who are now giving back in amazing ways. I'm Danny Trejo, and this is Rock Bottom and Back.
That, that's really good stuff, Earl. Danny Trejo, obviously an award-winning actor. How did he become part of this project? Well, we were so happy uh, to get Danny. Um, a lady named Tracy Boss that has indie marketing. Uh, we've been working with her since our first movie, Gift Horse. And uh, we wanted Danny because he always plays a super villain, but a lot of people don't realize that he's been sober for 46 years and he has his own ministry. As he, as he says in the, in the trailer, he's been to prison himself. Oh, so yeah. He's really he, been to yeah, Rock we Bottom. We wanted the back. voice of Rock right. Bottom. Uh, and so we got him. We were very blessed. He liked the project. And, and uh, hopefully, I mean, we've got the pilot and the DVD, but we're hoping this becomes a TV series. And I want to talk a little bit more about that, but let's talk real quickly, and we've only got about 30 seconds for this part of it. Let's talk about one of your favorite stories in the book, and that's Jerry Strickland, founder of Altair Strickland. Talk a little right. bit about Jerry's, uh, you know, his road. Well, Jerry had, uh, had written a book called Turnarounds about his own personal life, and he came to me to and he's been a client and a friend for many years, and we helped with the marketing and recruiting and a lot of other things with him and his son, Whitney. And uh, so he came to me to help him with the book, and then we got to talking about, well, you know, I've been thinking about doing a movie. How about you doing it? And then he told me about how they work with the wheelhouse over there in Texas, and he'd sold that whole co group of companies for almost a half a billion dollars. So he, uh, him and his son, Whitney, had helped fund the wheelhouse. And they've both gone from rock bottom and back and are wonderful stories in the book. We've got about a minute and a half left. Susan, talk about the release date for the book, how it's going to be distributed. Talk a little bit about the companion DVD. Okay, the book is going to be released August 2nd. It will be available in bookstores, um, Amazon, on the Rock Bottom and Back website, which is www.rockbottomandback.com. The DVD will be released on the website June 28th. So um, the DVD will come out before the book and we will probably be doing book signings locally and across the country. In addition to that, Earl, in about 15 seconds here, you've got an idea to go on and do a television series, Rock Bottom and Back, so uh, briefly. Pitched. Yeah, it's being pitched by real screen by the indie marketing lady. And we're getting good, uh, good inquiries. People really like the idea. They all relate with it. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that. Obviously, we look forward to the re release of the book. I I've had the opportunity to read some of the stories, and they are, they are both wonderful and inspirational. I know that the book's going to be a, a great success. Earl? Thank you. We feel very blessed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Appreciate for being it. with us today. We'll be looking for the, for the release when it comes out in August. Thanks. Thank you. That's a wrap, guys. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next week at this very same time for another edition of the Louisiana Business and Industry Show.